Hello guys, after completing the introduction of thermodynamics, we already finished the basics part of thermodynamics. What is a system? What is surrounding? What are the various process? What are the various types of system? Right. And then what are the various properties? Intensive, extensive. What are the pro, uh, main characteristics of a properties? So we covered all this. Uh, what is the thermodynamic cycle? What is reversible, irreversible process? What is the degree of freedom? Meaning of the degree of freedom. All we covered it in our basics of thermodynamics. Now we move one step ahead. The second chapter of our thermodynamics is the zeroth law of thermodynamics. There are three laws of thermodynamics, zeroth law of thermodynamics, first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics. We'll start with zeroth law of thermodynamics or we can say that this is the concept of temperature. This is the concept of temperature. Now if I am going through the what is the statement of a zeroth law of thermodynamics. The zeroth law of thermodynamics states that when a body A, suppose there is any body A, when a body A is in thermal equilibrium, just remember these things, is in thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium we studied in the basic part. Thermal equilibrium means there should not be any temperature gradient within the body, within the system and with respect to surrounding also there is no temperature gradient means the temperature of both system and surrounding will be same and temperature within the body will be same that is the meaning of thermal equilibrium we already studied in basic part. So when a body A is in thermal equilibrium with body B that means the temperature of body A and temperature of body B is equals one and same and if body B is in thermal equilibrium with some other body C separately. Means if I am saying these two are the bodies, if, if I am saying this is body A, this is body B, I make them to be in contact. So after some time, the temperature of both of the bodies are same. Now I remove the body B here. So with body B and this body C, I make in contact separately. This body A is in not in any uh, process so this body B and body C are in contact with each other after some time the temperature of both bodies will be same they are in thermal equilibrium with themselves with the surrounding also so if body B and body C are in thermal equilibrium separately then I can say that without making body A and body C in contact with each other I can say that the body A and body C are in thermal equilibrium Without making any contact, there is no contact between body A and body C. So, if body A and body B are in thermal equilibrium, if body B and body C are in thermal equilibrium separately, then we can say that body A and body C must be in the thermal equilibrium without making them interact. Right. This is the basics of, this is the definition of your zeroth law of thermodynamics. And with the help of this zeroth law of thermodynamics, we are able to make that out of these three bodies, one body will act as a thermometer. So that's why I, this zeroth law of thermodynamics is also used to make thermometers. The concept of thermometers will come after this zeroth law of thermodynamics. Now how a thermometer works. So thermodynamics in thermodynamics or your thermometer will work on the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Right. So out of these three bodies, one body will be act as a thermometer. So if body A and body B are in thermal equilibrium, body B and body C are in thermal equilibrium separately, then we can say that directly we can say that the these two bodies must be in the thermal equilibrium. Now this is the zeroth law of thermodynamics and one body will act as a thermometer. Now if we want to say, we, we want to ask how a thermometer will work. What is the basic function of a thermometer to, to measure the temperature of a body? How a thermometer will work? Suppose this is a thermometer. If I am saying this is a thermometer, this is the glass portion of thermometer in which mercury is filled. Suppose in which mercury is filled, there are some readings 10 degree, 20 degree, 40 degree, 100 degree and so on. There are some markings on it. This is the bulb, that steel bulb or some metal bulb is there. 
Suppose I am taking this as a reference body. I am taking body A as a reference body and body C as our body to whom of whom this thermometer has to has to measure the temperature, right? So how this thermometer will work? Now, what we are doing when we are designing the thermometers? What we are doing? If I am saying I am I filled here mercury, so the basic property of a mercury is when i give mercury some heat if i give some heat to the mercury it will expand its length will expand right this is the because of this thermal expansion of a mercury if i heat any body any body generally if i heat this marker its length will increase this is the also possible in your mercury mercury if you give some heat to the mercury its its length or its volume will increase so how this if i am saying if i have to design this thermometer i need to know at what length of mercury is 10 degree what length of mercury is 20 degree what length of mercury is 100 degree we want to mark these readings on the thermometer how we are making this we are taking a reference body suppose this is a reference body suppose initially this reference body is at 10 degree celsius suppose this body is at 10 degree celsius I make this body A and this body B, this complete thermometer, I make in contact with each other for some time so that they can attain some thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium means that the temperature of body A and temperature of this body B will be equal. So if it is at 10 degrees Celsius, then after some time the temperature of this body B will be 10 degrees Celsius and mercury will attain some height and I can mark that yes, this is the mark of 10 degrees Celsius. Now I change the temperature of this body A suppose 30 degrees Celsius. Now the temperature of body A is 30 degrees Celsius. I again make this body and this body A and B is in contact with each other. They can attain thermal equilibrium. And suppose at this length of mercury, this is at a thermal equilibrium of 30 degrees Celsius. So we are continuously changing the temperature of A and marking is going on suppose up to 100 degrees Celsius we marked. Now this marking is done. Now this body B, now suppose the body of our temperature say 40 degrees Celsius. Now suppose this body is at 40 degrees Celsius. We don't know the temperature of this body. That's why we are using thermometer. Thermometer are used to calculate the temperature of this body C. By touching this body C, ourselves, if, if we touch this body C, we feel some heat, we feel some, uh, some uh, cold or hot, we feel but we don't know the temperature of this body. If we want to know the temperature of this body, we have to use this thermometer. Now how this thermometer will work? This thermometer will be in contact with this C. We make this body B and body C will be in contact with each other. After some time, this, these two bodies are, you are in thermal equilibrium. What is the temperature of this body C and the temperature of body B will be equal. Suppose after thermal equilibrium, mercury will stop here. Suppose this is the reading of 40 degrees Celsius. So we are saying that the mercury will stop here because the temperature of this body is 40 degrees Celsius. So mercury will stop here. So we can say that when we are making this body B and body C is in thermal equilibrium, mercury will attain this much height. When the temperature of body A and body C, when the temperature of body A and body B is 40 degrees Celsius, mercury will attain this height. So we can say that Yes, if mercury is attaining this much height, then the temperature of a reference body is 40 degrees Celsius. So we can say that if body A and body B are in thermal equilibrium, mercury will attain this height 40 degrees Celsius. If body B and body C are in thermal equilibrium, mercury will attain this height. So we can say that the temperature of body A and body C will be equal. We don't know the temperature of this body. Suppose this is any T. Suppose this is NET, after making contact with B and C, this mercury will attain this point, this 40 degrees Celsius. So we are saying that if B and C are in thermal equilibrium, it attains this much height. If body B and body A are in thermal equilibrium and if mercury is attaining this height, at that time, the temperature of body A is 40 degrees Celsius. So we can say that because of zeroth law, if body A and body B thermal equilibrium, body B and body C are in thermal equilibrium, so that means 
at that time temperature of body A and body C are same so we can say that temperature of this body at that time is 40 degrees Celsius this is the concept of thermometer how thermometer will work so thermometer will work as a body B there is some reference body on which if you perform the experiments to make this reading this is the concept of thermometer now next topic is your principle of thermometers or we can say thermometry principle of thermometer or thermo thermometry to measure any temperature of a body to measure the temperature of a body we need a one property at least we need one property which can change with temperature so any property which can change with temperature is known as a thermometric property in case of mercury that volume which is expanding that volume is a thermometric property because if I am going to change the temperature of mercury its volume will expand and expanding right so there are a lot of these properties are there lot of properties are there like if I am saying resistance of a metal resistance of a metal will change with respect to temperature there are some pressures of some bodies which can change with respect to pressure so any property any property which can change with temperature you are changing the temperature and the value of that property will change so that that property is known as thermometry so based on these thermometric properties we have four different types of thermometers which we have to study first one is resistance thermometer first one is resistance thermometer second one is thermocouple third one is constant volume thermometer fourth one is constant pressure thermometer these four thermometers we have to study and we will study it one by one 